Okay, this lesson is for Math 1, Lesson 1.1.1. And the focus of this is to be able to identify the different pieces of an expression. And we talked about in class what expression is. It's basically a mathematical statement composed of different pieces. So the different pieces that we have to be uh, able to identify are the ones over here. We have a term, factor, coefficient, and constant. So the first thing we want to do is be able to simplify a statement. So looking at this statement here, notice we have parentheses, we have things inside parentheses, variables, numbers, things like that. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to distribute 2 times 6, or 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times x is 2x. So again, distribution is 2 times the appropriate things inside. Here, x times 1, and then... Notice this one, negative 4, and then x times x is x squared. So we got to make sure we do that as well. So now what we want to do is identify the pieces that are similar. So right here, what notice here, we have different pieces. We have a 6, the 2x, x, negative 4, x squared, and 5. So right now we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. Okay, enter the different pieces. Okay, we want to be able to adapt to combine ones that are similar. So here we have x squared. Now that's the only one, so I'm going to put that right here. Okay, that one's done. Now let's go ahead and see what we have x's. We have two x's here, and we have another x here. So if we combine those together, two plus one is three. Okay, now that's a different term because that's x squared and that's x. Then the last thing we'll look at is the numbers, and we call these constants. Constants are numbers by themselves. Okay, notice there's no variable associated with them whatsoever. So 6 plus 5 is simply equal to 11. Okay, so now looking at this, we have different pieces. We have terms, again, separated by plus and minus. We have the x squared term, which is up here. I'm going to get my highlighter. So one term, we have the x term, and we have a constant. So these are the three terms. Okay, now let's go ahead and identify what the pieces are. The number by itself all at the end is called a constant. Now, this is a number, notice it doesn't change. If we change different x's and put different numbers in for x's, these two terms change, but the 11 will never change. That's what we call it a constant. So as we look at different examples throughout this whole chapter, we want to be able to identify the different pieces. Now, each of these terms are made up of different factors. So here, we're going to separate the different factors. So look in here, we have a number factor and a variable factor. Factors are combined by multiplication. Okay, They're being multiplied together. So here we have the number, and here we have the variable. Okay, Both of those are factors. Okay, no, no, it's the number doesn't change. That number has a special name, and we call that the coefficient. It tells you the number of variables, so that's the coefficient. Okay, here the variable is x. Now, looking at the next example, we have negative 4. That is your coefficient, and x squared, which is your variable. Okay, so let's separate those as well. Now, the sign is associated with the, the number. So those, again, are factors, and let's identify them. The first one, again, is a coefficient, and this one here is, I'll just highlight here, a variable. Okay, so again, the different pieces that we have to be able to identify are terms. So those are the, the larger items in the expression. The terms that have multiple pieces can be separated into factors. One factor in this case is a coefficient, that's the number of, and then the variable factor is the unknown quantity. And we can see it here again. 3 is the number, and x is the variable. So those are the two factors, coefficient and variable. And then a number all by itself is a constant. So this is a good review on uh, different pieces. Now we're going to look at two more examples, and we're going to write expressions, and then we're going to identify the pieces and what they mean. That's the whole purpose here. Okay, so this one here, read the statement. It says, smartphone is on sale for 25% off. Okay. The sale price of a smartphone is $149.25. So that is how much you're paying for it after the discount. That's the sale price. It says what expression, so we're going to identify that, can be used to represent the list price. That's the original, initial, higher price of the phone. Okay. So let's first figure out, like in, in words, what this is. Okay. If we take the sale price, so sale price, 
plus how much we saved, okay, so the discount, then that will equal the list price, okay? So notice, we first have to logically put together a statement, that's what our expression is, of the original sale price plus how much we saved, and I'll tell you how much it originally cost. So notice we have to kind of build the equation up, not in this case equation, but expression up to know what it means. So let's plug in the pieces that we know, okay? The sale price was $149.25, okay? The discount, okay, is 25%. So again, we always show this as a decimal. Now again, it's not just 25%, that's 25 cents the way it's shown right now. It's 25% of something, okay? So what's it of? The, 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 the smartphone. So I'm going to use the variable S for smartphone. Okay. So right here is an expression that shows um, what the original list price is. Okay. Now let's identify the pieces. Okay. Now what's the one thing that doesn't change? The sale price of the phone. So that is the constant. It's a number by itself. does not change under any circumstance. Okay. Now, how many terms do we have? We have one term here and one term here. Now, the terms identify the different components of this expression. If you think about it, the price of the phone and then the discount. Those are two separate items. Okay. Now, this one can be broken into two pieces. We have 0.25 and the S. So the 0.25 is a factor, and that factor is called a coefficient. So these are factors. So I'm going to put that kind of right there. And then this one here is a variable. I guess I should have an R word for that. Okay. Now notice, as the variable changes, you know, let's say we went to a different store and you had a different discount. You know, this would change. Okay, and then perhaps these things would overall change. But this stays the same, and depending on the price of the phone, that's where it's at. Okay. Um, so again, what we're doing is identifying the pieces of this expression. Okay, so we're not solving anything. We don't care what S is right now. We want to identify just the pieces. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay. Helen purchased three books from an online bookstore and received a 20% discount. The shipping cost was $10. And that was not discounted at all. Okay. Write an expression that can be used to represent the total amount Helen paid for three books plus the shipping cost. Okay. So let's first identify the different pieces that we need. Okay, so without using any numbers, I'm going to say, all right, if you go to the gas register, what is included here? Well, you have the price of the books. Okay. And then the discount. Because they're on sale. Now, is the discount added or subtracted in this case? Well, we saved money, so we're going to subtract the discount. And at the very end, we're going to add the shipping cost. Okay. So those are the three components. So again, if I also look at these, these are terms. Term, 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 as of right now. Now let's identify what they are. So let's first identify what's the one thing we don't know. Um, we don't know the price of a single book. So off to the side and identify a variable. B is equivalent to the price of a, you know, per book. Okay. So... The book's total, well, since we bought three books, it's going to be 3B, okay? So that's the price of the book's total. Now what we're going to do is take off 20%. So we're going to subtract 20%, again, as a decimal, but it's 20% of something, okay? Now, if you just had the point 2 here, that's sense. That doesn't make sense. So it's 20% of what? Of the books, discount of the books. Now we've already established what the books are. The books are 3B. Okay, So that's what I mean. We have to be able to understand what the pieces are and how can we represent it using math. Okay, So that's what we have right there. And then the shipping does not change. They say, okay, it's a flat rate shipping, $10 no matter what your order is. Okay, So let's identify the pieces here. Okay, So again, right now we have three terms. Okay, Now this term on the end is a constant. It does not change. Now notice both of these are B's. So I can go ahead and simplify this because they both have to do with based on the price of the book. 0.2 times 3 is 0.6B. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add those. What's 3 minus 0.6? 2.4B. And then we just add the shipping cost to the end. 
Now notice what we're able to do is take an equation that had three terms, or I'm sorry, expression, and simplify it to two simple terms. We call it simplifying. Now what does this 2.4 represent? That means that if you pay for 2.4 books, like two books and then almost half of another one, then you get the equivalent of three total books. So notice you're not paying for three total books, you're paying a little bit less. So we can represent that as a coefficient, the number of books. So then identifying the pieces, the 2.4 is the coefficient that tells you the number of books that you're buying, 2.4, that's what you're paying for. And with the discount, you receive uh, all three books. And then the variable is the other term here. Okay, so this one has two factors here and here. And then this one obviously is the constant. Okay. So again, if the price of the book changed, let's say it was a $20 book, and then on our website it was a $40 book, the B changes, this term changes. But the discount doesn't change, you know, what you're saving and, and the 2.4 coefficient. And the constant, the shipping change, doesn't change at all. So you can even order more books or, you know, less books. So we have to identify those pieces. Okay. So here's three examples to kind of show you, you know, what the different pieces of an expression are and, more importantly, what they mean.